Hi, I'm Peter Farrell, aka Mike. Through my mother, Betty, I am descended from two prominent 19th century Windsor families, the Flemings, being members of Queen Victoria's household, and the Cleves, with businesses in the town. Both had close associations with Windsor Castle, and with Adelaide Cottage, which sits in the castle grounds. Seen on this map in red, the castle is situated in the northwest corner of a large area known as the Home Park. Adelaide Cottage, incorrectly labelled as Lodge on the map, is located in the extreme southeast. This 1839 painting by Caleb Robert Stanley depicts the cottage as it was when built for Queen Adelaide, wife of King William IV. When she died, Victoria decided that the Flemings should move from their Paddington, London home, to this idyllic location. In the year 2007, as a surprise, my wife Diana, through a local artist friend, Alicia, arranged for us to visit the cottage. For 35 years it was the home of my great, great, grandfather, George Fleming, 55 years a personal servant to Queen Victoria, mostly as page of the backstairs. George's wife, Mary Ann, initially a personal maid to the Queen, had charge of the Queen's rooms at the cottage and often had Her Majesty's children in her care, where they played with the Fleming offspring. Three were lost when young, but of the survivors, eldest daughter, Maria, married William Cleave, son of a Windsor mayor, builder, shopkeeper, and undertaker. Eldest son George Stephen, an artist and failed innkeeper, went to America and became a silent movie director, working for Thomas Edison, then on to Canada and the X. Alfred Fleming, second son, trained as a brewer locally, eventually emigrated to Canada, and became a prominent citizen of Wilberforce, Ontario. Second daughter Adelaide survived to old age on the strength of a pension granted by King George VI. Her younger sister, born soon after Prince Albert's death, was named Alberta Victoria, as her godchild, by the Queen. Our kind hosts were the late Lady Jane and Sir Hugh Roberts, Royal Librarian and Director of the Royal Collection respectively, the cottage being their home at the time. We were met by Lady Jane, at the driveway entrance, being where members of the Royal Family used to enter, if arriving from the castle by carriage or charabang. To the left, a close neighbour, was Adelaide Lodge, often confused with being the cottage. As can be seen from this photo, the cottage comprises two floors to the left, and a patioed wing on the grass terrace, known as the Queen's Rooms. On entering the ground floor, we passed by a very small kitchen and other utility rooms, then upstairs, along a passage and into a cosy little living room. I say little, considering that George's household could have numbered as many as ten people at times, comprising his family, guests, and even the royal children when consigned to Mary Ann's care, as often happened. As our hosts pointed out, we were sitting just as George and his family would have gathered, to spend their winter evenings around the fire, when the cottage was their home. Just talking, reading, or playing games, but no radio or telly. Otherwise nothing much had changed in 150 years. Then it was coffee time, courtesy of Sir Hugh, and for that we went up another short flight of steps into the magnificent royal suite, comprised of a lounge and dining room, bedroom, and bathroom, all much the same as it had been, throughout Queen Victoria's reign, looked after by Mary Ann Fleming. Finally, we had a walk in the ground surrounding the cottage. A beautiful day, in a tranquil setting, marred only by the deep-throated drones of jumbo jets flying directly overhead, after takeoff from nearby London Heathrow. The walk allowed me to compare a photo taken by my mother with her little brownie camera, 80 years before, when my grandfather's brother, Leopold Cleave, showed her Adelaide Cottage, where he had stayed often as a child with his Fleming grandparents. Uncle Leopold became an employee of the castle for the whole of his life, initially as a clerk, then as the Queen's photographer, and finally as the chief tapissier, responsible for the care and maintenance of the castle's inventory of furnishings. Leopold took this otherwise unpublished photo of the Queen. During World War II, I was taken to see him at his rooms in the castle, just before he died. Leo's brother, Thomas Cleave, my grandfather, also spent a lot of time at Adelaide Cottage in his youth, and would frequently ride in the home park. 
In 1884, or thereabouts, George and Marianne bought a house in Acton, London, and named it Victoria, and in 1885, forced to retire because of ill health, they left their beautiful Windsor home, quite a wrench after 35 years, probably the longest tenancy ever of Adelaide Cottage. Our visit was a great, once-in-a-lifetime experience, thanks to our charming hosts, and I should mention that unbeknownst to me at the time, a Canadian descendant, Rick Tallman and his wife, also visited, in similar fashion, and he later passed his superior photographic record on to me, some of which I have used for this video. Thanks Rick. Perhaps we should assure the new residents of Adelaide Cottage that we won't be knocking on the door again. Finally, George Fleming kept a diary of sorts about his life with the Queen and happenings at Adelaide Cottage. Two years ago I self-published a book entitled George Fleming, Faithful Servant. In the book I touched upon the incredible life of his uncle William Wood as spy, smuggler, and rose grower, all absolutely factual. Subsequently I discovered a great deal more about Uncle William and his partner, Edwin Nixon, who died the 19th century equivalent of a multimillionaire. George became very friendly with Nixon and I began to wonder how the latter, an upholsterer, made so much money. Another book, Honest Men and Shady Dealings, incorporates the stories of all three individuals, Wood, Nixon and Fleming. An interesting read for anyone seeking after truth. And thank you again Diana, for my surprise.